This is 2012 FRQ number five in the non-calculator section. Uh, the rate at which a baby bird gains weight is proportional to the difference between its adult weight and its current weight. At t equals zero, where the baby bird is first weighed, its weight is 20 grams. So initially it's 20. If b of t is the weight of the bird in grams at uh, time t days after its first weight, then the derivative is equal to this function. Let y equals b of t be the solution to the differential equation above with the initial condition b of zero equals 20, which we already underlined. Okay. Is the bird gaining faster when its weight is 40 grams or when its weight is 70 grams? Explain your reasoning. So is the rate faster at 40 grams versus 70 grams? So if this is the rate, you plug in 40 and you plug in 70 and see the difference, right? So part A at 40 grams, dB over dt equals 1 fifth, 100 minus uh, 40. That's 1 fifth times 60, that's 12. So at 40 grams, it is, it is gaining weight at 12 grams per day. Right. Then at 70 grams, dB over dt equals 1 fifth, 100 minus 70. That's 1 fifth times 30, that's 6, 6 grams per day. So when is it gaining weight faster? It's gaining weight faster at 40 grams because it's gaining at 12 grams a day. And then as it got bigger, it slows down to 6 grams a day. Okay. Find the second derivative in terms of b. Okay. Use the second derivative to explain why the graph cannot be the following graph. It cannot be this. Okay, well, let's find the second derivative first. So the first derivative is that, so that means d squared b or dt squared equals, well, that's your coefficient, 1 fifth, and then 100 minus b, well, 100 is a constant, so it's gone, minus, well, the derivative of that is db over dt, right? And we know db over dt is this, so it's really 1 fifth times negative 1 fifth 100 minus b, which is negative 125, 100 minus b. And this is, remember when we kind of did the implicit differentiation where you plug your derivative back into your second derivative, right? All right, so what does this say? This says no matter what it is, it is going to be negative, right? And um, the initial weight is 20 pounds or 20 grams, and it can only grow up to 100 because 100 minus 100 is zero. So it's really between 20 to 100. So this is always gonna be a positive value. This is always gonna be a negative value. Hence making my second derivative always negative. If it's always negative, it needs to constantly concave down. But in this picture, this piece right here is concaving up. This is concaving down. So that's why this cannot be the graph because in order for it to be the graph, it has to be concaving down the entire way, right? So even if it's going this way, is concaving down. Okay, so that's why it cannot be the graph. All right, lastly, use the separation of variables to find the y equals b of t, the particular solution to differential equation with the initial condition b of zero equals 20. So we need to take our uh, db over dt equals 1 fifth 100 minus b. And don't forget b of zero equals 20. And now we need to solve for the equation. All right. So separation of equation, separation of variables. So this is b, you need to divide it over. So db over 100 minus b equals 1 fifth, multiply dt to the other side, right? Now I'll take the antiderivative. Now, this may not look familiar because of the 100, but again, this is really db over b, this is like du over u, so this is natural log. So we have natural log, absolute value of 100 minus b, but don't forget, there's a negative because the b is a negative here. So let's chain rule. It's 1 fifth t plus c. At this point, the minute you have your plus c, plug in your initial value. So 0 for x, 20 for your b, all right? So this is negative natural log of 100 minus 20 equals 1 fifth times 0 plus c. So negative natural log of 80 equals c. All right, that's pretty good. Okay, so now let's plug it into, a little convoluted, but I'm going to plug it into that equation again. So negative natural log of 100 minus b equals 1 t minus natural log of 80. Okay, first things first, let's get rid of negative. So divide everybody by a negative. That gives me natural log of 100 minus b equals natural log of 80 minus 1 t. 
right? If I divide everybody by a negative, this becomes positive, this is negative. Now let's do E of both, because get rid of the natural log. All right, so absolute value of 100 minus B equals E of natural log of 80 minus 1 -fifth T. So again, you have to be flexible enough to know what this means, right? It means that you have two variables here. This is really e to the natural log of 80 times e to the negative 1 -fifth t. Why do I want to do that? Because this cancels out and brings out 80 as a coefficient. So you really have absolute value 100 minus b equals 80 times e to the negative 1 -fifth t. All right, or t over 5. Uh, I don't really like to write the negative 1 over 5 t. So an absolute value means you have two possible answers. You have a positive and negative answer. You have 100 minus b, I ran out of space, <laughs> equals 80 e to negative t over five, or 100 minus b equals negative 80 e to the negative t over five. All right, so see which one of these gives you the initial value of zero and 20. So let's plug in the zero and see if we get 20. So 100 minus 20 equals 80 e to the zero. 80 equals 80. All right, this one looks good. How about this? 100 minus 20 equals negative 80 e to the zero. So 80 does not equal negative 80. So nope, not this one. So my final answer is 100 minus b equals 80 e to the negative t over five. You're really trying to solve for b, so add the b over, subtract the 80, so b equals 100 minus 80, e to negative t over 5 would be your final answer. Okay, that's it.